I'd just like to introduce myself, my name's Alison Tickell, and I'd love to explore, really explore, and I hope today is the start of it, what a sustainable creative economy is going to look like in 5, 10, 20 years time. The beauty of events like today is it's all about networking, identifying who that there are other people out there who've got the same opinions, the same views. I think the most valuable thing is it's the, the, the breadth of practitioners. So you've got designers, makers, manufacturers and suppliers. People get together and they go, you know, like we've had the scenery salvage people here and a set builder here. You know, they're now talking to each other about, well, if you built the set in that way, it's a lot easier for us to recycle components of it. People have got different stories to tell and you can always learn from that and develop new ideas. The more kind of critical mass that we gain, I think, I think the further we'll get in, in making sure companies embrace this and more individuals get excited about it. Work collaboratively, work together. Use opportunities like these to see what others are doing Take the best of the learning, buy it, apply it, develop it and feed it back. The process to, to green in anything is first of all you commit to making the change. The circular economy posits that our economy no longer can be based on the take, use and dispose model. I've just done a production of Macbeth and I think on that show about 90% of the costume is from sources that I think are more appropriate sources than going to Primark or Peacocks and buying jumpers for two pounds. There is no way you can know where you want to be at in 10 years time if you don't know where you are at now. The Royal Opera House has really good policy. We have two staff committees, one at director and manager level and one at staff level that I sit on. So we get to, to tell everyone else what we're going to do and hopefully passing what we learn on to the rest of the industry. Production offers a great opportunity for all of the different people involved in making theatre to come together around a single exercise and explore what their role within that can do to um, improve the sustainability of, of not just that production but the organisation overall. Um, and the more organisations doing this, the more individuals doing this, the more bargaining power we have as a sector to influence legislation that is and will come in the future. There will be legislation, there will be requirements, and we need to be the ones that are telling the legislators what is a sensible form for that legislation to take. We don't want just more form filling, we want things that work. And the more of us that get involved in knowledge of this process now, the better that, that legislation is ultimately going to be. How important do you think it is to let our audiences know what we're doing in terms of environmentalism? I think it's absolutely vital actually because as you know as we just talked about with the festivals the biggest impact of what we do is the audience traveling to see it so if we start talking about these things we can make them really aware of the actual impact they're having. Where are we at with LEDs and Adam? We're halfway. The remaining 50% of improvement is going to take an extremely long time. So if you buy something now, it's not going to become grotesquely obsolete in a short amount of time, as might have been the case eight or so years ago with the very, very early LED lights. It's also been really great having an event like today at White Light. This is one of the biggest companies that hires out lighting to like all the theatres and all the events in, in Britain. So for an, for an organisation like this to be holding an event, I think it's really inspiring. I think it's really great. We hope that we can all take a little, little bit of responsibility and, and, and make theatre that is artistically brilliant but still sustainable and responsible. You're always imperfect, that is for sure, you know, and I think that's a, it's a constant picking oneself up on the things that you are and aren't doing and celebrating the successes and celebrating the things you are doing. I thought it was very interesting and very inspiring actually to see how small companies are also innovative and, you know, concerned and committed to, to changing the, the, the actual industry. The value of events like today for me as a sustainability manager in a theatre is actually realising that what I'm doing isn't just me on my own. It's like looking around a room and I counted up, there's about 150 people sitting in the room and those people are here because they care about what they're doing, they care about the environmental impact. Tonight I've heard a handful of really great initiatives that we didn't know about before um, and I hope that um, our next phase in our sustainable production work can be to really um, provide a platform for that best practice to be heard, for the industry to actually start speaking for itself and share the solutions it's already developing. The, the best thing I've seen from today is a whole new set of different people. The fact there's a whole new bunch of other people who realise that this is an important agenda is fantastic. This community in this room now, 
by having this conversation today and by acting on it will give us all the power of self-determination, to hothouse good ideas, support innovation, develop new markets, and it could and it should reconfigure how we work together and must inspire us 